Welcome back to Finals Day at Star Letter Inva TV Season 5. We are into our first semi-final of Best of Three Affair, where Vici Gaming Thunder in 27 minutes have taken a 1-0 advantage against the lone remaining CIS hopes in Vega Squadron. Bringing back our panel one more time here. Um, first game, I think, Vega, you got to sort of say, look, we got figured out. Let's come back in game two and do something different. What is that thing? They are versatile. They pick a variety of the heroes, so I guess they have something else prepared. Uh, they're going to need to win their lanes if they want to match against VGJ. Like, VGJ is not a comeback team, so th they should pressure them early on. I think Night Stalker is not going to survive the, the ban phase again, the pick phase, sorry. So it's... It's going to be hard for them. They're going to need the Vision Hero. They're going to need to put a lot of pressure to the lanes, probably get the stronger laners just to go 2-1-2 two, two against VGJ, I think. All right, we are moments away from the start of our draft. Uh, we're going to see the players here on stage. Oh, here we go. What bands have we got? Yeah. And so, and I mean, yeah, you're right. Go. Again, Night Stalker taken out. Oh, uh, yeah. man, the AA. Dragonite, let's go. Now, Death Prophet. Oh, oh, they're oh, going to first phase I mean, this, this is really, this is so much better already. I mean, they've, they've got the AA against the DP, and they've got yes. the Underlord. Yeah. But I agree with that. I, I, if you're not going to ban it. VGJ uh, Thunder, time for Kunkka. You know why? The Kunkka, yeah. The Kunkka, I mean, it mitigates a lot of the damage from, yeah. from AA, and they can also win with the style. If you have a Shark cosmetic for ulti, like you can beat Shark. That is with true. Shark. shark versus Shark. Do do. <laughs> I mean, they are good with it. Yeah, the Death Prophet, interestingly enough, uh, she won her first game, her first two games of the tournament in the Optic uh, Kingwin series, but has lost five straight since then. And a lot of that is we've seen AA heavily picked against her. I think, I think you're right. You've got to get you've got to get a Kunkka. It's so good here. I mean, not for that, but as well, it's so good against the Dark Rift. You know, he's, he's trying to take someone home. Yeah. You just X mark him. You bring him back. It's it's almost too good to, to not grab. And yeah, the, yeah. And the there cost you is go, right. The cost. Yeah. No, it, it no is way a they signature hero for Fade. Yeah. Uh, they, they have struggled with it uh, a little bit recently, but he is, I think, one of the better four position Kunkka players in the world alongside Roger. One, one of the ways to deal with the. Uh, AA and one of my favorite items on a DP is Eon Disk. Sure. It's just way too yeah. good not to have it. Yeah, yeah. I think I it, I think uh, over time you've you've sort of seen it now stabilize as like a third item for DP, and I think over time it's maybe even move up a little bit in her item build right after Yule's. I mean, it's, it's certainly rising in popularity. Oh, lots of pro players recently over the last few lands. You know, I've seen multiple games where there's been multiple Eon Discs as they go on. It's Especially in sort of the later games, it's, it's not surprising to see at least two or three heroes on a team have an Eon Disc. Yeah, yeah Fnatic had a couple of matches. Yeah. With Vegas Squadron actually picked uh, two Eon Disc one game. Hmm. They, they played uh, against Faceless Void, so that's uh, a kind of natural yeah. build. Yeah. Now, when you look at these at these combo focused lineups, right? Especially, it, it, it's just a, it's a combo breaker. So we see what the, the Oracle banned out by Vega Squadron. So what are those sort of ways you can make the game a little safer for a Death Prophet to play uh, against an Ancient Apparition? But to, to sort of conserve that healing to, to come in after the Ice Blast debuff comes off. But Well, the, the obvious one is the Tusk is still on the I board. I mean, Tusk, yeah. Tusk now is it, certainly still there. It, it's a little bit odd because you already have your four position in the Kunkka. Sure. And it, it's a little bit strange to see two fours, and DDC doesn't have a history on Tusk, but I, I think you do have to think about some kind of save for the DP. And that's true regardless of the AA being on the field. But, you know, with the, under the effects of the Frost Blast, when she can't get those spirit siphons off in the fight, you, you have to have something to protect her. And VG Thunder are going to take the Tusk out themselves. Yeah, Underlord and Tusk are way too good. Like, this lane is so strong. Yeah. You, you have save ability, you have good uh, kill potential in the laning stage, which Underlord kind of lacks if uh, you don't pair him up with the good hero. Uh, this is, a, this oh, wow. is looking really good for Vega Squadron right yeah, now. I, I really like the response here. Uh, taking the Terrorblade, of course, very strong against the Death Prophet due to the high armor resisting the physical damage from Exorcism. I think Gyro is still a good pickup for VGJ Thunder. It's in the pool, good laner against an Underlord. Yeah, they're going to go for DDC's oh. hero, something a little more traditional to uh, a, a stable laning team fight combo support to pair with the presence of Fade. This is a lift strat. It's anti-Uber strat. It really <laughs> yeah, is. It's, 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 it's get out of that Uber. You're coming with back the in. Skunk with the X mark. You get <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, and it, it's, as you say, with the glimpse as well, not just against the Underlord, but, uh, you know, Vega, the CIS style is these constant skirmishes. They want to be able to engage and disengage on their own terms. The Disruptor just gets you the free kill. This is their position four hero, a vision hero. They don't have any follow-up. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Nyx Assassin as a position I mean, four. The, the Nyx AA could be quite nice, can't it? With a, it, sort of the scouting true, and then the Ice Blast. True. Well, and it, and it just makes the DP feel that much more vulnerable right now. I mean, DP's got to be your one or two position hero for VGA Thunder, and they'll, they will occasionally run it on Salon in the safe lane. But uh, there's just nothing right now to protect her quite yet besides the ROM from the Kanka. I mean, they can still... Huh, nah. I still think Gyro is, uh, is a decent pickup for them. The magical damage early on can fight uh, scales uh, recently well into the late game, have... Uh, ways to deal with the Terror Blade. They still have uh, an offlane hero to pick. I think you consider, uh, has to has to at least enter your mind to move that DP to the safe lane and maybe take a Lina for freeze in the mid. Uh, get that burst damage against the TB. Very vulnerable though against the Nyx Assassin. Yeah, I think Lina's hard to play against Nyx, isn't it? It's suddenly, uh, it's just, the Nyx AA as well, it's, it's such a squishy hero. I love, I love also a DK if they want to Pick it. It's yeah. not that great mm -hmm. against the AA, but it's tanky enough against the Terror Blade. Provides you uh, that frontliner that you need. Also builds into yeah, Silver Edge. You can break the Underlord. I just worry at the, at the end of the day, if you pick the DK here, you're so limited in your offline. There's there's just aren't many offliners left in the pool that can really deal damage to Terror Blade. You pick the DK, you don't really have any damage for TB. Okay, oh, the Magnus. Wow. All right. Oh, look at this wombo combo coming out from VGJ Thunder. Yep. Uh, the, the old RP into boat, Static Storm. They've got some. Oh. They've got a pretty crazy team fight. They should ban Life Stealer. Life Stealer is really yes, great against their should. lineup. I mean, especially with Life Stealer Terror Blade, not yeah. the not yeah. the traditional one-two combo. But I agree with that. It's good enough here that you stick one of those two heroes mid because of the matchups. No, I mean it's. Life Slurry is great for BGJ Thunder. Oh, I think it's, uh, yeah, 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 okay. So, yeah, yeah, you saw, what was, who was it in DAC that, I think it was the, the final match of DAC that you saw the, uh, the Life Stealer. Ramsey's played. Yeah, the, right, Life Stealer yes. mag combo for VP against the uh, Oh, I, the don't, AM, I don't think right? they had the mag, not sure. But uh, he plays a mean Life Stealer, even if he's matched against the Terror Blade. Hmm, okay. Oh, this Maybe is I'm also a good, good ban, but, uh, yeah. Could work out. Uh, Faceless Void could farm up with Mask of Madness and uh, Empower from Magnus. I yeah. Oh yeah, the, the Life Stealer or, or maybe Life Stealer the, or, or Troll like Jug or, or Troll. Or, yeah, like, I, like all, troll. All these I like Troll. Heroes yeah. that uh, can benefit from from Empower. Yeah, what's, like what's the last hero for them? They have uh, enough lockdown. It's probably going to be a mid hero. <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 this is going to be. It's going to be. A, yeah, that's a very again a cost old yes. thing, right? right. <laughs> Keep the picture of brood on your monitor. Yeah, I, I, I worry a little bit. I like the mag strap, but I worry a little bit if you pick something physical damage here. You really, you're, you're leaning a lot on catching that terror blade in your. Oh, they banned combo. lifestealer by them by themselves. VJ Thunderstorm. They're not going to pick that in. Okay. Check that. I apologize to the viewers and the rest of the panel. That's right. We'll, we'll I, forgive I, you I, I'll I, forgive you on behalf of Twitch. Thank my, you. my old man <laughs> eyes can't see the band some of the time. Oh, you know, I'd love to see VJ Thunder play, but I guess, are they, are they PA pickers? They're not. The juggernaut. Okay, Boring more, juggernaut. More, the, the, uh, more the old classic. classic. Combo. I mean, it is. It's the, yeah. it's the classic of classic Magnus combos. Yep, so this uh, will be a Silar juggernaut and freeze DP in the mid lane. So what are we getting from Vega? They need a mid laner, but they have nothing that uh, pierces through the BKB. No save whatsoever behind the, besides Underlord, and it's going to be really hard against X Mark and uh, the Glimpse. I mean, might they just go for the, for like the puck again in this sort of situation? Have that bit of sort of control to allow the Terrorblade to go to work in the team fights? Yeah, puck is great against. Uh, Kanka, but uh, kind of vulnerable to Disruptor and sure. Dead Prophet because of the silence. Yeah, it's hmm. it's going to be... They, they need some... <laughs> I, I don't see the hero that can change things for them. They have a good lineup, but uh, I, I prefer Beach J Thunder already. The, oh, okay, the Viper. I, I thought for a minute with the wings that that was going to be a mid-Jakiro, but they're going to go back to the mid-Viper. 
Uh, I, I like it in terms of the stability in the lane that, oh, this is going to be Freeze on Juggernaut and Silar on the Death Prophet. Interesting. Guys, uh, hard, to, hard to pick Vega here, given what we saw in game one, but I True. do like the draft a little better. Lacoste, you going to um, gonna go back to VG? VG. Uh, I don't like uh, the, most of the time, I don't like the mag lineups or void lineups when you just rely on that one ulti, and if you miss it, you're going to lose the fight. But they have a couple of uh, other things to deal with. They have Jug uh, ulti, they have DP ulti. Even if you miss an RP, you can still take a fight. You have a lot of uh, damage mitigation with uh, Rum, so uh, I think their lineup is just way too good. All right, Owen? Yeah, I mean, I've got to, I've got to agree with Lacoste this time around. I think VGJ Thunder, they're, they're going to do some very flashy stuff with this Kunkka Disruptor that's, that's going to absolutely shake up anything that the Vega Squadron try to do around the Underlord. Yeah, I think the, the combination of comfort heroes and the team fight combo, as Lacoste was saying, is just going to be too much. Love to see Vega Squadron force the game three, but they're up against it here. Hopefully, we're going to get to see another game, but let's see. Bringing you the action once again, here are gods and winner. It is do or die time for Vega Squadron. They're down 1-0 winter. It'll win this game to force a game three, or it will be VGJ Thunder in the grand finals. Some adjustments in game number two. We see it Magnus. We see some very heavy team fight on one side. What are you making of the, the drafts uh, this time around? Underlot TV. I have faith in those two heroes. Yeah. I mean, TB seems like the carry hero right now. Underlord seems like the offlane hero right now. You know, they've got two of the the right ingredients for a, a can, win, at least. What can go wrong? <laughs> I'm so, so, so sure that VGJ Thunder have something to say about that and several things that they think can go wrong, particularly this mag-jug combo. This is the classic one-two punch. Uh, if you go back, like, I don't uh -huh. know, six months or so, everyone was doing mag-jug. They have like very very heavy team fights, uh, but still it's uh, cool down like quite a cool down base lineup. Uh, yep. RP, DP, ultimate. I mean disruptor not so much disruptor and conquer, but still the cores have a fairly lengthy cooldown. Uh, Vega score on least uh, a less reliable on their cooldowns, so maybe they're gonna be able to take advantage of that, especially with the Nyx plus A combination. They find someone that's gonna be Ice Blast, then Underlord can maybe TP to the catch. Seems like some early action here. Freeze is going to run into a group of Vega heroes, but he will be fine because he's a juggernaut. He spins to win, gets away. <laughs> Spin to live. We'll see standard lanes from VGJ Thunder. The jug safe lane with a support disruptor. It does yep. look like Vega with a lot of heroes camped up top. Both supports there for now. Whether or not that will remain the case, we'll have to wait and see. I don't imagine they want to leave a Terra Blade in a 1v2 lane, potentially, as Kunkka is in the bottom lane. Typically, VGJ Thunder always going for that creep wave pull behind the tower. Mm. Same thing seems to be happening up top with Vega. Oh, they're going to send the Kunkka top. So I think Terra Blade can solo against the Magnus. Fine. Yep. And Vega's going to... Oh, great Taurus there by Fade. Zayat's getting brought incredibly low. Did not expect Fade here to show up so early. He TP'd for that Torrent. What a play from Faye. This guy has been one of the breakout full position players, particularly on his Tusk, but Kunkka is the other big hero that he plays incredibly well. And we'll get his team a first blood there. That torrent being missed. They saw that one coming as Blizzy will not fall to it. That landed. I believe we see a second kill up here. It's Fade on the Kunkka, by the way. <laughs> fade. Not Fade. Yes, you're right. I don't know where I got Fade from. <laughs> <laughs> so Slayer here, moving to the mid lane, uh, they are just like happy to leave uh, the Terra Blade alone because they feel like uh, 1v1 is going to be farming. Magnus will farm, but Terra Blade will farm more, so they are more concerned okay. about like trying to secure the other lanes, trying to win. It's more like a greedy move, you know, because they are trying to yeah. win all three lanes. Well, AA is headed down there as well because it feels like a lane where once Mag gets some levels, he can really start spamming that Shockwave, getting the bottle, grabbing Bounty Runes, push out the lane and... Get arcane boots. Yeah, yeah, and then suddenly this TB is not a happy TB if he's getting spammed by shockwaves and Mag is free farming with bounty runes. But AA is there now to perhaps offer some assistance as the first metamorph will be used. This is looking to do some zoning, try and resecure this lane a bit, cause Yang some problems. Although I say that Yang, plenty of regen in his hands. Uh, top lane where Thunder are focusing their attentions, both supports behind this tower, trying to contest the pulls that are going down. Fade 
Trying to make sure that someone's getting some experience for these creeps being pulled back behind the tower and Blizzy is going to be getting what last hits and denies he can there. Yeah, just trying to make sure that he doesn't you know, control the lane there. They want to just make sure that the lane gets pushed up a ASAP. Uh, they have to pull the wave though. Oh, Curious snipe, A8. Has he got it? He's got it. In the base. With the haste rune. Two minute haste runes and courier snipes. <laughs> a match made in heaven at this tournament. I feel like that's the fourth courier snipe from a two minute haste rune I've seen. Maybe yep. the third. It's getting more and more popular. The position five is the killing courier snipe. I think solo is the one that reminds me the most of uh, position five doing all these like weird, uh, surprising courier snipes. Especially for how he uses smoke sometimes at level one to just kill the courier. It becomes a whole lot easier when you've got that haste, you're not being outran by it. Mid lane Death Prophet versus Viper, pretty even on CS for now. I'm shocked, not even scared of this Kunker rotation, although he does take quite a bit of harass. He has a Ring of Aquila and a second Wraith Band back at base, so going for a lot of early stats here. Hopefully we see that kind of Hurricane Pike build coming out of him with that extra Wraith Band. For top lane, side pulls coming from Vega. Does feel like they're controlling these lanes pretty well, particularly up top. Underlord getting a lot of CS and experience out of his off lane. Yep, that's really, really important for, for the hero. Uh, from the last game, you can see what happens when Underlord gets too much farm, your team just doesn't kill anyone. So, uh, VGJ and Thunder are going to get a taste of their own medicine right now. Unable to really control the Underlord too much. Yep. And you kind of said this is going to be a a farming slow pace game. Does it feel like either team is going to be making moves anytime soon? Top lane, Zayas again. Blade Fury down. Rizal find that kill. Can Blizzy gather it? Oh, he cancelled the attack. He managed oh, to just shoot you, him in man. DDC. Uh, that was so nice. Well that played. was nicely done. Oh, and mid lane. Caught Viper with a Kunker move. X Torrent. And brought down by the Death Prophet. Spirit Siphon. Very. Hard spell to deal with in this laning stage. Illusion. Will Thunder be trying to like force team fights and play around the Exism a lot, or will they just mm. try and farm with the Mag plus Jug? I think they're gonna farm with Mag plus Jug, even though I feel like uh, you're farming against like a Terrible Underlord. Like the early game is like extremely powerful. Yes. But Magnus Juggernaut is uh, is a combination that I think can can match up well in the late game against the Terra Blade plus Underlord combination because if you get a good RP in late game and you have those like refresher scenarios or a refresher shot with the third Roshan, yep. there's always a good chance that uh, the TB just dies from the uh, from the RP. Yeah, and saying the panel touched upon is they're not entirely reliant on the mag RP to win a team fight. Like they don't have to hit a three four man RP. They just need to, to kill it. the TB pretty much, and then yep. the, the Vega Squad and Strike side if. The game ever reaches to that point, you have to use the Dark Wave to try to counteract uh, the RP. Yeah, there's a lot of big teamfight spells on this VJ side. And if you do that, well, you get X back. So there's already a counterplay yeah. even oh. for that. Fate, his smoke gets broken there, so he's going to know that someone's nearby. So he's pinging yeah. it out right now. This ward is perhaps looking for the kill on Silo. But an Impale with a Cold Feet, they should be able to bring down Death from here completely out of mana. No follow up kill onto Fade, who was yep. in the neighborhood, but. Just way too much magic damage there with uh, AA plus Viper. Yep. The even up the kill tally in this mid lane. One kill on the Viper, one kill on the Death Prophet. You see harass down bottom as well as some harass up top. Both teams trying to zone out these offlaners, saying Palantimos does not do particularly well. Yeah. Fairly, fairly even game so far. Uh, if you look at the CS across the board, yes. very, very close. Like all, despite Thunder having this uh, two kill lead, but CS wise. Not too much of a difference here across the board. Like all the lanes are farming fairly even. Nice torrent fades. Tanka strikes again. They got the damage to bring down Undershock. We'll see fire being dropped by Blizzy. Trying to get that revenge kill on Sila. <laughs> Can chase him down. Perhaps there's no boots on this Death Prophet. Blizzy will not be able to chase because of that torrent. Instead, it's going to be Zayats in this mid lane rotating and getting X'd up. He can't chase as well. Nicely done. Fade is constantly on point with his torrents. So they rotated like what three heroes in. So big win here for VGJ Thunder. Yep. Sunder onto Yang, but <laughs> that's the get out of my lane Sunder. You you harass me with Shockwave, <laughs> I'm gonna harass you with Sunder. <laughs> harass you with Sunder. <laughs> that's a plus. It's you know it's a potentially like 
600, 700 damage nuke Winter. If he's full health and you're low health, you know? More yeah. damage than a finger of death. Sure, sure. You're not wrong. The math checks out, Parker. Will the uh, gank check out, Yang? As the one charges to skewer away to safety. Metamorphosis was popped oh, in. Oh, good, good smoke timing here. He's got a soul ring. He's going to power push out, freeze. They push out the top lane as well, so the enemy... And there's yes. a very high chance that you don't see this coming. I mean, Pound Timos is still farming in the lane. The X is there with a torrent. Freeze has got ulti if he needs it. He may just go for the blade three and said they know there is no Sunder because he used it to harass Winter and they what get the kill. A timely rotation there. They know that the Sunder was used previously. Oh, your your harass, your 600 <laughs> damage harass. Long cooldown. Juggernaut pushes out the top lane, goes to the bottom lane, smoke. The, the sequence of events, this is like what differentiates a, a tier one team and a tier 1.5 team or tier 2 team. This kind of like movement, the team movement, and how they get an advantage out of these small little details. Someone reporting, oh, he used Thunder. Okay, I'm going to come right now. He pushes the lane, spins, TPs down. The support is ready there. Smoke into the lane. Bam. Take care. Blizzy. We'll have to go for the Dark Rift out. Will it glimpse? go in time? Can he time the glimpse? They may just have the damage. They glimpse. Oh, he's uh, back. Perfectly played. DDC, DDC, my man. That is how you, oh. oh, okay. Blizzy, but, my yeah. man on the Underlord. He doesn't die until uh. he gets torrented. Fade will catch him. Without that torrent, I don't know if wow. they get that kill. DDC, man. What a glimpse. He is talked about as one of the premier five position players with good reason. And making the play needed there to secure a kill on a fairly farmed Underlord. So kills on the carry, the offlaner, and several kills too on Wait, Undershock's did, Viper. They did they just kill all three lanes? They have killed all three <laughs> lanes in the last, like, roughly two minutes, I would say. Yeah, Terrible went down before that to, to the Juggernaut, now the top lane, the Underlord. Yep. And Viper was, like, the previous casualty. Yeah, so, VGJ turning what was an even laning stage into a one laning stage based on a couple good rotations. Yep. Jug, 5k net worth. He is miles ahead of the competition. Freeze is just like playing one of the best games I've seen him play in this event so far. Like his first few games weren't really impressive, but this game he's been moving and really putting his game uh, team on his shoulder. The last game he had he had like a really chill game on the PL. His team was already like 4v5, killing everybody. He's like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm not needed. I guess I'm taking towers. <laughs> I'm farming. Yes. Those are the, the dream carry games sometimes. But then there's the games, you know, where you're the one putting your team in that position. That's what we're seeing here from Freeze. I'd say definitely special mention of Fade's Tusk. He has been all over the place as well. And another smoke with Silo. They want not just kills, but towers off of this. They bring in the Death Prophet who has Exorcism. They're going to throw up for an AA kill. They go charging in looking for more. This Underlord does not have TP, it Great appears. Is there. Uh, they may have thought he TP out. He Quelling Blades out. They check everywhere except the escape path. The Quelling Blade out. He's free. Can Fade catch him? The X is not there. He gets out, he sneaks past VGJ, but the tower, perhaps the more important thing, is claimed. The great escape, but they are, they are going to have to do more than escaping right now for Vega Squadron. They are falling further and further behind this empowered juggernaut. is just farming a storm, killing heroes, killing towers. Yep. TP is oh, not he being takes able to the keep up. And he TPs top. Can this he might be big. Something? He has he's, slash. he's alone though. That is the big thing. I don't think he can one. He, the... He's not alone. He has a disruptor. Okay, he's got disruptor right now. Disruptor just got leveled up as well. The rotation from Vega is there. Can they bring down Palantimos? Freeze is melting to the Metamorphosis attack with the Viper showing up. Healing Ward in the trees is making Freeze alive. One more right click. The Sunder helps oh. Undershock and Freeze may just turn. Has he got the mana for an Omni Slash? He does not. Freeze jukes his way all the way back to safety behind the tower up top. Oh, that was really unfortunate. Maybe he should have drop his Omni first before spinning, but he was worried because there were creeps nearby. Yes. And then he, he was like, he's spinning halfway. Everyone was right clicking, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I have to drop a healing ward, I have to back off. Then he didn't have mana to Omni Slash. Yeah, he did not expect the Viper plus one rotation from the trees. It was almost enough to yeah. bring him down. Otherwise, maybe I think he might have considered using the Omni first, yeah. if he knew. But either way, it's uh, still... Uh, not that bad of a casualty. They only lost uh, support, but yes. they did lose the tower eventually at top. All right. These early towers, always something TB wants to start getting more map control, being able to mm. press out these lanes. And and Vega Squadron is going to have the level 6 on the Nyx. They have level 6 on the uh, AA on Slayer right now, so... 
Undershock, he's been scattered. Dire Observer in the jungle there. I guess that's gonna be a huge tell that there's some vision there. Yeah. Maybe they're gonna know. They used X from Fog, so I think it's 100% known. That is the kind of thing, you know, when you're doing this kind of kill, sometimes you, you wanna like obscure that you have a ward as much <laughs> yeah, as you, you can. Run, you run into vision before you o use your spells. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of Xing from Fog, yeah. yeah. The poor exactly support will be like, why do you do that? Yeah. My ward, 100 gold. That's my, when you're supporting like your mid laner, like uses just a harass spell onto the high ground to reveal your yeah, mid ward. Yeah, yeah. You're like, you, Dude, you, get you reveal this ward and you, it's like not even for a kill. Like when it's there, it's like, okay, it's for a kill. But if you, it's just to, like harass or something, it's like, come on, man. Your Tinker uses heat seeking missile and you're just like, Dude, bro. If he cancels himself, I forgive him. Okay. You know. Cancel salves, okay. <laughs> well, I'll yep. see uh, Vega kind of continuing to play the farming game as well. Yep, they're I mean, going to have uh, this Nick scouting and, and with the ice bus have, uh, I think they're going to have like a good chance of like picking someone off uh, right now. But Thunder knows that Nyx is missing, he's level 6, they're just grouping up. Oh, yeah. sentry was played. Okay. These guys are just good at Dota, I guess. Yep. They they re read the Can they kill him? I don't think they've got another sentry, but it doesn't matter with the kinetic field. Read the situation perfectly for, for VGJ Thunder there. Yep. Excellent decision making and game reading. So the next tower one will be the top tower one. Uh, we see the Magnus here, maybe setting up uh, and waiting for his team. He's, uh, got some healthy farm on Magnus. Has a blink dagger now completed 13 minutes in. For the AA. Oh, oh, there's the RP. They're going to skewer him. Oh, not sure if he's aiming for the cliff, or maybe just his teammates here. The Death Prophet's there waiting to secure the kill. X is thrown out as well as the Ghost Ship. They really want to take this fight. DDC melting to the Terror Blade and the Viper, who've swung in as well. Sila, he can't heal up with the Ice Blast on. Now he can perhaps look for some Spirit Siphon, but he feels like it's just too late. As he self yules his no spirit siphon immediately comes down and throws him out, but uh, he needed to do that before the yules. Yeah, he needed to. I think he would have been fine if he did that before the yules. Yeah. Uh, that was. I think he didn't want to have to turn. He yeah, turned because maybe. if he turned, he may have uh, died before he even got and to turn around. And there was like an ice vortex on top of him. But like, what it, what it feels like, whichever way he does it, he dies. So he may as well mm. try get the spirit siphons off. A rather adventurous uh, movement here by Thunder. Rather risky one. RPing one hero, skewing him to the team, and the terror bait comes in, destroys the disruptor and the backline. So just good reaction there by Vega there and yep. defending that tower. Nice little move and win for Vega, who were starting to fall behind off of the lane stage. Unable to keep up with the farm of the Jug, even Death Prophet well ahead of this Viper in terms of farm. Undershock has not had a friendly game. Oh, okay, th that's going to give up the ward. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, that's a ward he probably yeah, bought why, as well. Why would you <laughs> <laughs> okay, may maybe, I, I didn't see him. Maybe he was really low and he just popped the healing one. Yes. And he, he thought he's like, oh, he's low and he's going to <laughs> kill Ancients, he's going to get even lower. It's <laughs> there to kill the healing ward. <laughs> Zayats, he's been, he's been the stand-up player for this team, I feel. Yeah, That's but he has so far had a quite a quiet series, though, the, the yes. first game. I mean, can't really blame him on the first game because they got outdrafted. But this game so far, not much has been happening. It's yep. still early into the game. His job right now is to be the mobile tree and scouting around, like setting up kills. Uh, with the Ice Blast, if possible, by Axe Mark here. Underlord is going to be in trouble. Pretty tanky here. They're going to look to turn around on the Death Prophet. Do drop the Ice Blast here. No kills coming out for the Death Prophet. And there's going to be a quick, easy kill. This AA counter pick working out fantastic from They're not done as Undershot goes chasing for the Kunkka. One or two more poison attacks will finish off the kill. The Magnus looks for a Blink Screw. Doesn't actually get it, does oh. it? Still get the kill on the Nyx Assassin. Blizzy will not get out of there oh, with the Dark Rift away. They are not done as they chase further. Buyback coming into play from the Nyx Assassin. There's the RP on the Viper here. Freeze really wanting to get this kill and then probably look to get out as Nyx re appearing at this fight. Gosh, but that was like the last second that the Dark Wave wow. was completing. Like, it was really close. They killed him. Everyone was like stuck there. And uh, they forced a buyback. Just enough damage coming out from that Juggernaut who dished out 2.8k in total. Yeah, and I think that the boat didn't really. Oh. Okay. Oh, no, don't get him. Okay, uh, he I thought there. the Ice Blast Shatter was going to finish him off. But. Well done. By Zayak there on the next uh, key key pick off. Uh, at least the buyback didn't feel so bad right now from him. Yes. It wasn't too expensive. You get a kill following it. But I, I think the board didn't really 
uh, affected, the, 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 the Rump didn't affect the DP, so the DP couldn't really... Yep. Maybe he would still have died because of the Ice Blast, but could have helped. Yeah. That's always some great Ice Blast coming out from Sioma, the Slayer. Yeah, um, he's just like tunnel visualing. You I'm gonna want to Ice Blast this dude every single time. Yeah, I feel like often though in this Death Prophet versus AA matchup, because of like how mobile and fast the Death Prophet is, sometimes the AA just doesn't counter the DP if you miss an Ice Blast uh, in a fight, like you lose the fight because of it. I mean, as long as she's being controlled, then yep. Ice Blast should land should in land. most situations. Yeah, you've got the, the Pit of Malice as well as the Nyx Assassin not to the, help with not that. Not the most uh, disabled lineup, no. like they don't have a lot of stuns, but enough, I would say. Carapace, like I said, Nyx is really good against the DP. You just hide around, she throws a spell, yep. Carapace, you stun her, you initiate. And she is a very high intelligence hero, so mana burn hurts a lot. Yep. Science again doing some good scouting in. There's an observer sentry planted. Scouted out that those wards were planted though, so he knows what's going on and lets his AA know, I imagine. Still a, quite a an even game despite like the, the 4k lead is like still not that big of a deal yep. yet um, this game is gonna be going on for some time <laughs> <laughs> this is the, so, uh, the long one well yeah. we'll see how long I mean it could very much you know like 30 minute stages when those big team fights start happening and it could end uh, very yep. quickly from want, one good or bad team you fight. want Underlord to have all those like uh, Crimson I think Crimson maybe a Shivas later you want all of the armor items because there's a lot of like physical damage from the Thunder side and Free is going to be x mark here. As for the AA, I feel like uh, the Death Prophet really wants to get a uh, BKB against the AA. And AA game. wants to get Aghanims this game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if the AA will get that far, though. We'll see. Maybe with the help of the GPM talent. Middle tower. You don't get the GPM talent, Parker. Oh, we'll see. You get the 10% spell M. That's better. Nah, GPM was 60. Money. It's going to be a long game, Winter. you got to... Play, yeah, play for the long uh, winter. Okay, okay, fine. I guess that's true. <laughs> we'll see. I think both uh, definitely have their merit. They saw Zayed there with that sentry. And instantly, Fade comes in. Does he have dust? Yeah, he does. Oh, he got it. Ooh. Torrent throw, and he didn't have vision for the egg. Oh, now he does. Well the torrent done. Helping him out. The vision from the torrent giving him the axe bump. Yeah. Zayed thought he could play around the fog there. He, this dust is going to wear off. Yeah, he can. They see him. Oh, they the see him. is also wearing off, though. And no carapace means a kill. I, you know. Job done, kind of, for the Knicks. You know, he was roaming around for, like, at least the last two or three minutes, I yeah. feel like. Not a, Still a bad loss. death. Yeah, but yeah. a reasonable one. Not one you're upset with, of course, if you're the, the coach. But definitely something that VGJ Look at that, rightfully man. Punished. Look at that 10% spell. And 10 Look spell at that. I will defer to you <laughs> from now on for all things Dota. Um, Freeze did go back to Battle Fury after his Yasha, so even with the Magnus yeah. wants his own cleave. And that this means long the two game. heroes, it's going to be a long game, and they're yeah. often going to be farming separately. Like, you look right now, Mag is farming. He's like, I want to farm. I'm going to go off the top lane. <sighs> you farm the Ancients, the bottom lane. Look, yep. Get your own Battle Fury, bro. Because the Juggernaut need, needs to outcarry the TB, so you have to go greedy. And with the Battle Fury plus Empower, he might be able to do so, but yes. don't forget the Underlord. He's going to have the Atrophy Aura, the Atrophy Aura plus the Crimson Guard and whatever, like Shivas. So you want as much plus damage as possible yeah. to fight through the aura. I think that's what you want to go as the Underlord. You just want to make sure you negate as much physical damage as possible. Yeah, big kill if they can get it, this Juggernaut. Freeze! Will Does he, he get know? the Blade Fury TP out in time? Yes, he will. I, I think, think he'll he Blade Fury TP, right? Oh no, he's oh, going back into the siege. Uh, Ice Blast is there. They're going to hit this one. The right click damage is there and great oh, play. I thought he was going to TP. Like spin TP. Yeah, because if he way. goes to the TP, you should always spin TP. I think TP. he was thinking about whether he can push out one more wave. That one second of greed. Or he was thinking whether I should go for that Siege Creep. <laughs> There was a Siege Creep there. That's a lot of, a lot of gold, you know? You know how many p players die because they want to kill the yeah. Siege Creep? He, yeah, he cleared the wave and then he's like, okay, I'm going into spin TP. Oh, wait, no, Siege Creep, but... Uh, Gonna maximize my farm. But yeah, junk kill. So they get not just a kill, but a tower, it looks like, as the TB Metamorph used for a tower plus one. That is the perfect play for them at this time of the game. And not to mention, if the game goes late, the Disruptor Aghanims could be also a tight turner for Thunder. Ooh, yeah, that something, a, a TB or... Like, I think both the position fights, like we mentioned, about. the Aghanims on the A, but the Aghanims on the Disruptor is equally uh, important yeah. against the enemy lineup. There is the BKB on Death Prophet. That will help him out against the AA and Nyx Assassin. 
I was about to say, the next thing he needs, I feel like, is armor, and he's got the shivers queued up. Like, you can survive against the Ice Blast and the magic damage, now you need to survive against the TB. Yeah, I think the Magnus could also consider going for a Crimson Guard, uh, if he wants to. I think it's not bad against the, the Terrorate, but it seems like he's not going to do that. He's going to go for you, so I know... Because I know Daryl, Daryl likes to go that too sometimes when he feels like they need some damage negation. But oh, hey, hey, gonna get caught out here. Those streams of Hagen Interceptors being shattered with another death. 40 seconds plus on the sideline. Not the biggest of pickup, but still they get the Roshan. That's the prize. Yep. And Vega is going to try to. Oh, they can actually kill the disruptor with the, the illusion and the Nyx there. <laughs> <laughs> If he perhaps backed off a little bit too far, but the problem is VGJ did not use Exorcism for that Roach. Oh, is so this high ground? Oh no, that way. They've still, still tier one's top, yeah, you know. A lot they they want to solidify their lead a bit further. They're up 6k gold. I imagine VGJ feel like they're ahead now with this Aegis, but they're not item yeah. ready to go high ground. And they want a gem as well. So after, I would say, like you clear out this tier one and the remaining tier twos, then you get a gem. You, see, you secure control of the map, you make sure that the Nyx can't. You know, yep. get any crucial oh, they found Undershock oh, up found here. Oh, great. Oh, he's got, he's got it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, guess is right, knowing that the TP was likely coming. What a call to go, yeah, to go scouting those trees up there. I'm sure how he yeah, figured out they, he was in there. They understood that the situation of the game right now is thun like, they are Thunder. They are in the lead. They are... Yep. Opponents will be most likely trying to dodge them because they have the Aegis, they don't want to fight to them. And when you don't want to fight into your opponents, you're going to be looking to cut the creeps, do anything you can delay the push. So, just... Did they scan? I don't know. Maybe they scan. I they see. used the scan for Roshan, I'm pretty sure, around the uh, Ancients. So I don't okay. think they scanned that one. Could be wrong. Just good game sense, I guess. You you know that your opponent can't fight you, and generally when they can't fight you, they're going to be looking to do this kind of creep skipping stuff. Yeah. What do you make of Jug getting the BKB this game? What's he looking to use this for? I mean, there's a lot of control though. Uh, I mean, the annoying spell, not control, a, a lot of annoying control, like the Carapace, uh, Pit is annoying. You, if Because if you spin to bypass all those spells, then you're not right-clicking. You want to be right-clicking the enemy. Particularly with his Battle Fury yeah. build. I actually like Juggernaut's that go BKB, uh, so that you don't be overly reliant on your spin. And Breeze here gonna drop his Omni Slash. One support kill, two support kill. Yep. Sure looks like they'll get the second with the help of the Kunkka. Freeze getting the double and perhaps now they eye off the high ground with those two kills. They may not have to go for those tier two towers. They could even just get some damage here, but it seems like the Viper will be doesn't enough feel, to hold the lines. It doesn't feel like you want to go high ground right now because Omni is expanded. I think True. like the safer choice is just to get the the T twos. Oh, even the RP was on cooldown for 20 more seconds. And you say safer, it also feels like their lineup will match up against the TB fine in the uh -huh. late game because of the the Magnus with the Jug and even Death Prophet. Good scaling. Yep. So the Magnus finishes a Yules. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Why would you want to use? Are they lacking defensive item? Kind so just of? catch, I guess. You want to have more catch because your opponents are gonna be um, speed pushing because they can't fight you at the moment. I guess that's mm. like the idea here. But rather uh, something that I don't see too often uh, on the Magnus. Oh. So see we'll see how he plays out. So uh, the underlord completes the crimson earlier, and he's going for a pipe. You mentioned shivers. Would you rather have seen that this game? Uh, yeah, I think they got so. The oh, disruptor was not okay. in range. I thought I he was in range. Yeah, maybe bad. May, I think he may have lost vision even with the the trees there. Yeah, maybe, possibly. Or he just, you know, he's like, I'm gonna glimpse him, and he missed. He didn't. He didn't have know yeah. when the dark rift was but going on. I really don't like the pipe here right now. I don't think the pipe is. No, no. maybe yeah. he'll save someone, but I think you 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 kind of want like the shivers or even uh, getting like a solar crest. Yep. There's a lot of like uh, physical damage, like there's so much physical damage coming out from the enemy team. Like the pipe is great against the disruptor, I'll the bolt and whatnot. Here we go Winter, they're gonna look to break the high ground here. Uh, Mag was fishing for a skewer, okay, didn't what? find it. Okay, well, what just happened? They will not get the initiation of the Magnus Freeze. Did use the blade through to try and take down this tower as well as the X isn't being he's committed to this one. He's gonna, yeah, die once. He'll be coming back to life fairly soon. Carapace onto the boat, that's gonna hit the country here. Freeze instantly spins on his respawn. Luckily that Blade 3 had come back up. Not 
sure if they can commit further for this one. Silo, uh, he's going to go with the BKB. His Exorcism is probably doesn't have too much time left on, but Breeze does have a BKB as well. They should be able to bring down the Underlord. They'll do so. They want, yes, the, the, they want the tower. No buyback made just yet. Tier 3 tower claims. Silo's Exorcism, it's ended. It's perhaps go time for a Vega. They are going to buy back and try and take this fight. They really want to get the Silo kill here. They're going to BKB on the TP. Fight through the Static Storm. Not afraid of that one is Vega Squadron as they get the first kill. Looking for more. Yanks Magnus is going to get pulled back and brought down. Okay, maybe not. So Yules. There we go. Yules. Perhaps a blink out oh. now, but the pit is there waiting for him. And he will get claimed as well. Three kills off of the Underlord buyback. Still Yules. rather... A uh, rather good defense here by Vega, despite having to use a buyback on the Underlord. They got the Aegis, they got three kills. That was the danger moment. That's where you lose that fight, or you don't defend properly, you lose a lane of Rax, and suddenly mm -hmm. you're behind by 10k plus gold and a full lane of Rax. And a tier 3 tower, that you can kind of shrug off and still continue moving forward in Vega. I don't, I don't like how Thunder like, Siege there, where they just ran out with the Juggernaut. He used his spin earlier, so he got caught by the Viper Strike and he was in the pit and the Firestorm. And he didn't want to pop his uh, BKB to get out. It was, uh, I don't know. I felt like he, there was still like a good two minutes on the Aegis. Uh, I, I don't feel like he wants to die, like lose the Aegis there so so easily. Yep. Not, not too sure about that movement there. But Perhaps I, just trying to get it while they had Exorcism up, but even yeah. then it's like... But then in that case, pop your BKB and hit the tower. Yeah, just BKB and just hit the tower and just get out. Don't waste the Aegis, just wait it out first. Yep. I was like, no need to waste things since you have like two or three minutes more. But we'll see how that affects the the game later. It might not be too big, too much big of a, a deal there, and he would he would want to have a 10 second BKB in the next fight maybe. Oh. And his jug is going to start itemizing against the TB. Gets the butterfly as his next item. Also just got level 20, so plus 10 armor on jug against a terror blade can be very handy. As he's going to get tankier and tankier. TB needs to start thinking about how do I itemize against some of these defensive tools because he went BKB, which is great to stand his ground against all the disables, but he's going to need some damage items, it feels like. Uh, the Magnus just needs to target him, I feel. He needs to just make sure that I don't care about anything else. I am RPing the carry. Yep. You just play like a Doom, you know, I'm just going to Doom the carry. There is his public enemy number one. RP mm, on nice the scan. TB every time. Radiant Scan saw this rotation coming through. They're pinging there. They are only four Ancient. heroes here, though. They might be taking a bad fight here. I, mean, I don't think they go want to. They'll group up. They may try and yeah, stay, stand the high ground and hope that there's a move upwards. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, VG were able to plan, plan up two good wards in uh, the yes. enemy territory. That's going to be really useful for them uh, for the upcoming game. Um, I guess right now the th uh, uh, the thing that I want to do is like maybe get the remaining tier twos and try to get the second Roshan before they go for the high ground. He come Vega. Metas come back up. They feel like they've got the tools. Oh, this to what might be their fire. downfall because he sees nothing here. They feel safe. Yeah, the smoke. It's going to be enough to scout up bait. It's just a Kunker kill. Uh, that's Not okay. the end of the world for Thunder. Yeah. He's going to throw a boat. I don't think we'll see the rest of Thunder try and fight into I, this one. I wonder if he's actually doing that intentionally, because he was like standing a bit to the left, where his like his core player is like farming on the right. Maybe and the two wards see nothing, but they the fact they see nothing in both mid lane and the bottom jungle perhaps is telling yeah. in itself. Maybe he was just like just in case, you know, just in case if they were nearby with smoke, I'm just gonna stand yeah. there. You know, this is what you want to do as a support player. There's nothing going on on the map. Uh, you're not stacking. You're, you're not farming. You're not, like, yeah, you're not farming, and you don't feel like you can cover a hero because because too many heroes missing on the map. Even if you s sit behind your core player, if they are all there, you're, you're yeah, still gonna die. A five man smoke onto yeah. Jug or Death Prophet will kill them if they get yeah, stunned. Yeah, I by would say it. unless you are IO, you would it would be fine to do that because if you are IO, you just sit behind and then you yeah. okay and bring him out. So what he did there was correct for the game and saved his car carry potentially. And game keeps going on right now, so... Yeah, I and mean, he's already respawned, and Vega don't take towers, they don't turn that smoke into anything mm. more than the Kunker kill. So the... DP has a shivers. The main things coming up ahead will be the second Roshan. And obviously, with the second Roshan coming... Wow, that, that was... <laughs> okay, uh, never mind, he has BKB, so he, he's like pretty hard to kill. I, yeah, he just really wanted to deal with it. And once he takes out the ward, he knows there's no vision of him. Yeah. Oh, 
they got the real one. Can they burst him down here? He's got BKB with the Sunder. The Omni Slicer will make sure they finish the kill. And the Freeze ward, man. The ward. is not done. Vision winning this team fight for the start. TP's already bought back. He wants to go in. They really want to take this fight. Undershocked BKB, but that's not going to help him against Silas Exus. And the physical damage doing a lot. Great Torrin on a two. They're going to get the Nyx with the Underlord. Take those two out. And Vega Squadron are made minced meat of as three heroes down. TP oh, may have bought back, glimpse. but... He's got a BKB, but he may have to use it defensively. They get the Viper with the Yules. The cat is proving to be a bit too much there. That's four dead, and TV may have fall back, but he's got no friends. He's all alone. He's going to just try and retreat with the Reflection covering him. The chase is on. Oh, BGJ may just oh. go for the Rax instead. This, this could is, be it. This, this game is over. This is too late. Well, TB has a tough ask ahead of him. I don't see him defending against these heroes without his BKB, and that Metamorph is going to be wearing off soon as well. Bro, what a play there by Yang. He has his supports to, you know, to tank. Yep. For I mean, getting you, that RP. You mentioned it, yeah. The, the ward there and just, he is public enemy number one. You RP this Terra Blade, you win the fight. No one else you need to worry about if you're in his shoes. And they make sure they get that kill. Yep. Uh, if they just secure the rush, the game would just be over. So Vega has to fight at the rush. They have to contest the rush. They cannot allow VGJ Thunder to just get the Rex, get the rush and cheese, uh, Aegis and cheese. And I think that's that's just game if they allow that. They have to put their last stand in the rush on. Seen a lot of resilience from Vega throughout this tournament. They had a great group stage, but they feel like they've ran into a wall here in VGJ Thunder. They're going to try and sneak the rush themselves. Meanwhile, Zyx is finding a solo kill on DDC. The damage is there with the Spirit Vessel, I believe. The ticks are just oh, not the Healing Ward close. came very close to saving him. And they're in the Roche Pit. Saving Private DDC. Uh. We saw that in the last game from Yang saving him. And this oh. game, always, everyone is trying to save DDC. They don't have to contest the Roche. They take it. That's one better. As they get themselves Aegis and Cheese and keeps their hopes and dreams of a Game 3 alive. Still a small sliver of a hope. But it is there. Huh, I was surprised that Thunder didn't really... I, I guess they have they no vision. Read it. Yeah, they maybe smoked into the Roche Pit or something. It just felt like Vega, the second they respawned, ran towards that Roche Pit and said, like you said, if we don't get this, we lose the game. Uh, if they get the Rax as well as Aegis and Cheese. So let's just, you know, gamble all of our marbles. It's kind of the same for Thunder. If we get this, we win. We, we sort of win the game, you know, we close out the game. Yes. Right now, it's there's still a sliver of hope right now. But the light at the end of the tunnel for Vega Garden after getting the Aegis and Cheese. I think for Thunder, it's like, well, we didn't think they were rushing, or even if they did, they are like, well, we're still far, far ahead, even with them having yeah, Aegis but, Cheese. but it felt like a, a moment of lapse of concentration. They had their spells up, you know? Yes. It's like, it just doesn't, didn't make sense that they weren't even, like, doing anything to prepare for it. Just probably not reading oh, the situation correctly. And x here, oh, he has yield. the use. Yep. Yeah. But it's still not enough to get him out. Let's go back. Left alone to die. Next Assassin will be exterminated. Pesky little bug taken out and there you go. They got uh, a tower, so. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, that's similar to the Conquer Death, not the end of the world. It's kind of that scouting. Oh, those heroes up here. Perhaps maybe should have known that because they're going to be going for that last lane of racks. It even looks like they're drawing lines down to go push the tier two. Do you think VGJ need to wait for the Aegis to expire or can they still? I think they can fight. Fight, yeah, okay. But, uh, Knowing them, they are probably going to wait it out, probably, because you want to minimize the chances of, you know, something going wrong as much yep. as possible. But I, I do think that they are strong enough to do it, but there's no need to, you know, risk anything at this stage. Down. They have Magnus plus Juggernaut. They can scale really well into the late, like the ultra late game scenario. No risk in that tier 2 tower. The high ground is yeah. where the risk I'm, really I'm, comes. I'm sure they, they're just gonna, you know, wait it out yep. and just play, just play against the cheese. They got some wards down, so they're perhaps happy enough with this. They'll, like you say, wait for ages to perhaps expire. They're gonna take some shrines, which weren't even taken yet, and wait things out. Perhaps even wait for a pickoff, like we saw earlier in the mid lane. If you get vision of a hero, you can get him with the Magnus, Yules, or a Blink Skewer, or an RP. If it's something like Terra Blade, you go for that. Because their lineup gets a whole lot scary if you get something like a refresher on Magnus. Ooh, what a okay. sneaky play. They're going I for like this. this. It's the Magnus. It's a, a decent kill. That's the team fight hero. That's the hero that took out your Terra Blade. They're going to bring oh, him the down. Gem. They got the gem. What? He has buyback. If you didn't have buyback, that would have been massive. What a dark reef. <laughs> so clever. Com commended this guy. Vega Easy. showing some resilience here in the late game despite being down 15,000 gold. Yep. 
They want to force this buyback. The question is... I mean, I was wrong to count them out. They sneak the Roche, then they do get their play. They're going to even maybe try to force the buyback on Do they need Magnus for this defense? Perhaps they're going to wait for Kunker to initiate first. Oh, Juggernaut's taking the range racks. Juggernaut could even go for the top lane. I think they have to get back and defend. Unfortunately yeah. for Vega, they would love to stick around and force high ground, but they're not going to get the chance good, to. Good play by Freeze there, because he realizes there's nothing to stop the spin TP. So yeah, he can. It's like really low risk. It's the only thing that can kill him is like if the next Nyx assassin, his Vendetta, is next to him, he just stuns him. Out As of we it. saw earlier, but I believe he he also knows Nyx. You know, just initiated bottom with his yeah. Vendetta. It could have come back up, but it was a pretty low risk play from him. Still, they got the gem. That's a pretty sizable pickup for them. So yeah. gonna mean that Thunder has to you know, buy other means of detection against the Knicks. Unfortunately for them, the Aegis is likely going to expire fairly soon. Terrorblade's uh, buyback might come to match. They smoke under a ward. That is uh, unfortunate. I think they saw that with the gem. Yeah. Oh dear. Vega will say. That's the I think that's the last smoke for some time. It very much feels like it with how much they've smoked over the last five ten minutes of this game. A team that often saves smokes for for later on. I mean, you you you, you kind of try to you know have at least like one to two during the mid game. You don't, early game you use one, maybe two yeah. at max. You don't want to use all of it because there's gonna be a lot of like defining moments in the mid game. You want to smoke, get a pick off, get Roshan, yeah. or smoke when you have this kind of like big timing item, a BKB, say a, a dagger or some critical hero. That's why you want the smokes to be available. During yeah, that phase. chewing through smokes to get ganks off in the lane stage seems like a, a waste since those kills often don't mean too much. Yeah. Lotus Orb picked up on Blizzy's Underlord. That's perhaps going to help. You can get that on Omni Slash. That is the, a game winner. <laughs> yeah, a recipe for a one team fight. Helps if you get, like, that's the thing. We saw in that last fight, TB, he gets RP'd. If you put that on your TB after he's RP'd, Omni Slash is used, boom, your TB just got saved. That is, you know, how a fight could go down if VGJ Thunder aren't careful. Obviously, for oh, Freeze, I you have to. Make sure that any target being Omni Slash is not Lotus Orb. I can tell you they're being really, really careful right now. They waited out the ages. Um, they are very careful. They have a refresher on Scylla. But like you said, the game is by not um, not any means over yet. They are, there's still a chance for Vega if they, you know, they somehow find a good initiation from the Knicks, especially if they can kill this Magnus off first in the fights. It will set up uh, for a good, good way of uh, the, the fights ending into uh, Vega. Vega victory. Both teams playing largely in the dark with gems de-warding all the vision here. A couple of woods down the bottom side of the map, but not really in a key place right now. Roshan and is going to be the next big objective if this game oh, continues the at this pace. has a refresher as well, but this is the thing about why I, I felt like so. the, the use was kind of peculiar because you, you, you kind of want to have like BKB because you don't want to like RP, then you get uh, Carapace, then you can't skill her. You don't want to get stuck in those kind of situations, you know. That's why I feel like I see this refresher. I don't even feel that it's like a, a thing like, oh, okay, we got the game secured. Yeah, you know, because you VGJ. there's still things that might go wrong. Double refresher, though. The thing that could go wrong is these cores dying without buyback, I feel. Who, who doesn't have buyback now? Both um, the two refresher heroes, Death Prophet and Magnus, do not. Oh, dear. They smoke up VGJ. They feel like these refreshers, though, will win them a team fight. Double damage rune oh, for Vega. God. I think this is, this is their chance to just win the game here. They have to find VGJ. VGJ is like, we've got this ward. They're hoping someone comes back to defend, and Vega sticking together, knowing that teeping back could. They saw that Crips will mid if they were watching. Oh, a dark uh, rift to fountain of all places. But they they do have the the so double damage. This smoke still lasts for a little bit longer. Will anyone get caught? Double damage will be wearing off fairly soon, Winter. I believe it may have already ended. If anything. And this is where I think if you're VGJ, you're like, these refreshes are nice. This, if we smoked and found a kill, we could have won the game, but we didn't. Let's fall back and farm our buybacks. Even wait for Roche. Yep. Wait I think, for the next I Roche. think that smoke and initiation makes sense if you're smoked and catch them by surprise. But now that there's no surprise factor, play it safe. You just play with your vision. You place wards. You, you know, stand around them. You say place if wards, but <laughs> they have no wards to place, I believe. <laughs> it, they, the one they find on the high ground just instantly got dewarded. Yeah, I mean, when you reach to these situations where you're just waiting for Roche uh, to spawn, you just like secure an area, play around the area, maybe with at least three heroes, then the other two heroes will be either farming jungle. You don't want everyone to be farming. You want 
Nyx. Ooh, nice static storm. That's going to help keep them Magnus alive. In goes Sila with the Xs and BKB immediately popped by the Viper. And it looks like Vega just went out. The RP used on a Nyx. I believe they just yeah, want his gem. Yeah. So it's Viola. With the refresher and with the gem being lost, I think VGJ feel that is worth the kill. We'll see if they commit the refresher on Sila as well. He may go high ground with the BKB here and then pop his refresh. Mules used against the Reflection. In comes the Juggernaut with a Blade Tree. Just trying to do as much damage as possible. There's the second RP. Can they bring it? They get the Lotus Orb up as well. You do not want to Omni Slash this one. They stun him up. They both stun each other. There's oh. the Omni Slash. He does not wait long enough. He gets the, the Lotus on it. Oh. Fade being brought low on the Kunker. Terra Blade gets off the Sunder. He should have known. He just mistimed it. Sila pops his BKB refresh. He's going in for round two. He really wants to stand his ground That's and fight. Cheese. Terra Blade still on the front lines here. He can't find the healing ward in the trees. Palatimo's being brought low. Does not have Sunder for some time now. There's a Dark Rift. Can he save him? He's dead. He's going to have to buy back here, it feels. As Vega are uh, going to be put further back by that one. They may still be able to defend this. Nice initiation from the Nyx Assassin. Aegis is expiring here. Buyback coming out from the Terra Blade. As we will see the Ice Blast go through. Nailing Freeze here. If he's brought down, that's going to be the big call they want. Freeze trying to juke through the trees here, but he's using the tree line. Actually completely breaks their ankles. Does not get found. Does not get caught. Death Prophet, the ca big casualty on the Thunder side with the buyback there. But that's a Terra Blade buyback in the late game. Still hands down to Vega. That was such an incredible defense there. They could have just easily lost that defense and just lost the game right away. Great Lotus Orb by the Underlord there. I, I mean, Freeze, he, he uses Abyssal Blade on the Lotus. He must have thought the Lotus was like, it's going to wear off now. I'm going to Omni Slash. And I think it had like yeah, 0 0.1 second left. Probably, yeah. It's more, he, more he, on the jug, I guess. He the knew other. the Lotus was there. He didn't even think of using Omni Slash until like the <laughs> last millisecond. <sighs> jug oh. walks into an Impale here. Freeze oh. being brought low. Yes, BKB. Terra Blade does not have Metamorphosis, most importantly there. There's going to be an Ice Blast nailing him. The Yule Scepter coming out as well. They may just be able to bring him down. He freeze falls to BKB and run. Luckily for him, Palantimos does not have the range. With Metamorphosis down, the chase is still on. Now he drops the Healing Ward here. They're going to go for the Magnus instead. This could be the bigger kill. Taking those RPs out. As we will see, Yang gets the Skewer to the high ground here. Uh, healing Ward. Healing Ward helping him out. Well, RP he, he back had, up now. He had no buyback if he died. Gosh, why if, do they have to do this? If he dies there, potentially Vega, you know, go high ground. Yeah. Go for a, a game-winning play. Into the Roshan pit we go. This is the next big fight. Smoke up from VGJ. This is it. All in from Vega. They want this Rosh. There's Aegis, Cheese, Refresher, Slayer. He's going to scout this one out. He's Impus. There's the first RP. It catches the Carapace, though. No skewer for you. Nyx Assassin stopping this one. The Goat Ship going to go through from Faye. That's going to help bring down the Nyx safely. Buyback's coming into play here. They've got to make sure they don't let VGJ get this Rosh. Terra Blade doesn't have Metamorphosis just yet. He needs to get that range form up. Undershock's got him with the BKB. He wants to take out the Kunker. Kunker will fall. Where's the next RP? Refresher from Yang. I believe it's not up just yet. 15 seconds short, and it looks like Yang is going to die here. There's the Omni Slash going, swiping on through with the Static Storm to help cover on top. They can't use spells on Blizzy. His Underlord is done for. Him. Instantly buying back terribly. He's got the Metamorph. He's going in. He's trying to bring down Silas. The Death Prophet going to self heal. Keep himself alive a bit longer here. Freeze already coming in the Omni Slash. Can't really do all too much, and Vega are being bested here. There's the refresher. He gets the next up here. Terra Blade is down. Vega looked done for. Without a TB, they can't hold on any longer, Winter. I don't think there's any fight left as Aegis Cheese Refresher acclaimed. Just like one second. Like, <laughs> he was waiting and waiting and oh. waiting, and finally he got the chance to pop the Refresher. And even the, the Magnus uh, was so that's... close to dying on a couple different occasions. That would be definitely the near in the coffin right there. Rapier but... bought from Freeze. He smells blood in the water. He wants to finish this, this game. It is VGJ, the Sharks on the Dire side, who are hunting down the little baby Sharks of Vega Squadron. Undershock and a BKB pops a blade now in a desperate attempt at a last ditch ever to hold this one. Freezes Rapier though. We saw this on his gyrocopter. Loves to go for these game winning Rapiers. He's getting brought pretty low. He has got the Aegis still to play around. As the tower hits, we'll actually finish him off here. Can they hold this one? They're going to look to get Mega Creeps here, which I believe Vega cannot stop. Undershock again going in with the blade now. Gets torrented up. Freeze. Charging forward here. Can they bring down the Viper? Up to Lotus Orb. Actually, Hurricane pikes his way out of that kinetic field. As Yang goes hunting, gets the RP onto two. Freeze is there. The clip's back, kind of messing this one up a little bit. Blizzy low as well. Freeze almost 
melting himself there with some of the blade mills coming into play as two more Vega heroes go down. Viper and Underlord dead for 100 seconds. Nyx desperately trying to buy some time to hold, We're hoping this Terra Blade can come back for one last hurrah, but it's not to be. Vega Squadron, the CIS hope on the playoff stay, are defeated here, and it's going to be VGJ Thunder playing in that grand finals. Still. Very brilliant effort by them, you know, they were down two lanes of rags, but, you know, Sneak Roshan made that great dark replay, gets the pick up on the Magnus, gets the gem, goes for the next Roshan as well, because they, yeah. they understood. They made they that great dark replay bottom, it, it was definitely a Vega team that showed to the very end, they still had a lot of fight left yeah. in them, and it wasn't just desperation, like, let's throw our lives there to defend, it was very smart, intelligent plays that they were making. They are still trying to win the game instead of just trying to stay in the game. That's a huge difference in like the mentality of the players. Like, that's a great sign of a team that has huge potential to come. Like very, very impressed of what I've seen from Vega so far in this event, even though they are out. But I think good things are gonna come yeah. for this team. From Thunder showing an ability to outcarry the Terra Blade, even with the Underlord backing him up, the Jug Magnus combo. Definitely showing some good variety here in this series. Going back for the Phantom Lancer in game number one, pulling out something a bit different with the Magnus plus Jug. BGJ Thunder look like they've finally come to form here on the last day of this event. Yep, good to good to see that from them. They've been uh, having a a tough week, um, tough two weeks at DAC. Yes. Didn't really play well. Um, there were a lot of like critics uh, voicing out of whether they are actually the real deal, despite like having a a good amount of points uh, on the pro circuit so far but hopefully they're going to be able to silence the critics and prove them wrong yeah and this may be just a small step along that journey they are in the top eight i think right at like eighth place mm -hmm. maybe or very close to being knocked out so they need all the points they can get this is a tournament when you're in the they're the highest ranked dpc team here they need to solidify their spot in that top eight. They want to get first place. They want to walk away with this championship for the points, but also kind of like you say, to prove the critics wrong, to show that they are still that top five team or whatever in the world that they want to be. So great stuff from, from VGJ here. Yep. And uh, hopefully Broodmother is going to be, you know, <laughs> remembered. <laughs> no more broods. <laughs> no, no more forgetting about broods for VGJ. I mean, we saw it there with the last ban. I think <laughs> if they go up against Optic, that's definitely going to be the case. But we've got to find who they will be going up against. It's Optic versus Fnatic up next. Right now, VG Gaming, Thunder through to the Grand Finals. Two years ago, almost to the day, it was Vici Gaming Reborn who came out victorious in the very first Star Ladder I League Invitational at this same venue. And today, Vici J Thunder experiencing their own rebirth after struggling in several recent events. They are into our grand final best of five later today. We do have another best of three series coming up for you in the meantime, but let's put this one in the books one more time with my panel of Odie Pixel and Lacoste. The CIS squad vigorous. Oh, God tried to help him out. He had the shark tie going on today, yeah. <laughs> but it was not to be for the hometown favorites. I mean, I favored the draft from um, VGJ Thunder from the start. Uh, the execution was there on the point. They were pressuring the lanes. Uh, they had a good lane setup, good matchups to, to play with. Also, the communication was good. If you look at the early rotations from the Juggernaut, uh, they know that Sunder is on cooldown. He TPs to the bottom lane, uh, takes a kill on the Terror Blade. They get the tower, also fade on the Kanka again. Not disappointed at all. The, the man is really on the point. Some clutch glimpse plays, plus X Mark Torrance. Dark Rift was not... Uh, really viable this game against uh, these two heroes and juggernaut he also built his own battle fury and has empower and with oh. the first event for yasha just to excel his farm what miracle does on the juggernaut before he goes for for that battle fury which gives him also the ability to fight early on i know and he had it at 1644 he got that yeah. battle fury oh, so after the, his yasha yeah. after those great early game rotations yeah. so no. Yeah. He had nine-minute phase boots, <laughs> Bond, Akila, yeah. and Yasha. Yeah. 
This was, uh, I think, Freeze. It's we've sort of seen some some other games of of his like this at this land where he has just absolutely outperformed himself. Right. It's this incredibly stable carry performance. Uh, I think at the end of the game, his KDA was from like twenty one twelve or something. It was it was incredible. You know, he he just sure. he wasn't making any mistakes. Uh, but we'll let him off for the Omni slashing the Lotus Orb that we saw. <laughs> yeah. But other than that. You know, his, waiting his, and waiting and waiting, <laughs> and then pops it at the last millisecond. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll call that one. That was down to lag or something. You know, when I first saw it yesterday, after uh, after the ROTK reaction the other night, uh, Freeze losing the mid lane as TA, I kind of assumed that it was the young player maybe getting sent a message by his coach, but he's really excelled in yeah. the safe lane role uh, from the gyro game yesterday with the rapier, now to this juggernaut performance. You know, the PL in game one was good. But this, he he was going to carry this game from start to finish. Yeah, I, I love his mentality, I got to say. Even when they are ahead, he goes for Divine Rapier. He loves the yeah. Rapier. Well, he just and wants he to close the it. game. Yeah. yeah, I feel that uh, in this particular game, uh, Vega was uh, never in charge. They were just defending. Yeah. There was a it good really point here. when they wanted to go for a play to try to win the game instead of staying in the base, waiting for VJ and Thunder to finish them. They snatched the Roche. But it just doesn't feel that uh, they could win this game unless VGJ Thunder somehow just throws the game, makes a lot of mistakes. Yeah, Which, I, I felt yeah. like that first play really set it up. That was a TP where Fade, TP top lane, they did not expect, Vega in their aggro tri formation did not expect the third hero there. Fade TPs in, hits the torrent, and it really felt like that killed any momentum from that aggro tri lane. Yeah, I think having sort of this support combo against a, a, a team like Vega was was pretty incredible. You know, Fade and DDC on this Kunkun Disruptor, so much sort of catch. Uh, and ways to, to punish sort of uh, over aggression from Vega Squadron, which was normally sort of forced out of them by VGJ Thunder starting the fights. But the fact that Faden DDC's control allowed v v VGJ the majority of the time to, to sort of get those extra kills at the end of the skirmishes. Yeah, they did make it a little bigger, did make it a little bit scary here. You see the Magnus kill here. Uh, VGJ gave up the Aegis a little bit cheaply on that last high ground push there, and, and they did manage, did Vega, to catch out Yang then in the bottom lane when it one more kill on the Magnus without buyback, and it looked like Vega could have gotten into it, but then this combo here by VGJ Thunder just seized control of the game. Yeah, this Juggernaut was... Uh out of control. He had two more items uh, than Terrorblade. He had nothing to pierce through the evasion, has a lot of stuff to focus on. Meanwhile, you have uh, VGJ Thunder's lineup, a lot of sustain with the healing ward, with the boat. They're basically they taking no damage in the team fights. Also, I got to give credit to, to Yang for his Magnus performance. He yes. was not afraid of yeah. uh, catching just one guy. He was always on the other side of the map, just canceling yeah. those uh, split pushes coming out from Vega. And here was what Owen was mentioning earlier. Unfortunately, Fade, uh, Freeze rather, not quite waiting out that Lotus Orb. You could see him kind of holding on to the Omni Slash there, but uh, mistimes it just a little bit. But ultimately, uh, VGJ Thunder with just so big a lead at this point, 17k you can see on the screen, that it ultimately didn't matter. Yeah, that, I think that facial expression sums it up Ooh. just about <laughs> perfectly. I believe it's Palatimos there on the Terror Blade. Very, very strong effort here. This was kind of a neat fight. Uh, the Magnus begins this fight with 15 seconds left on his refresher org cooldown. Vega looks like they're making some moves. They're able to isolate Kunkka on the top side, but Magnus is able to just hold on, hold on throughout the fight. No, he didn't have it. The refresher orb was on cooldown. And right? Yeah, so 15 seconds yeah. right here. And, it's, and he's right at the end of the fight. He's able to get the refresher off. I didn't really feel the influence of the Wiper. I was afraid before the draft even started before that last pick what they're gonna pick just to try to counter or that their lineup has more more sense. I just didn't feel the influence of the Wiper. Nothing yeah. to break, doesn't contribute too much in the in the team fights. Well, I think it was. I, I, I think the 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 theory of the Viper was sound. That that Viper was supposed to win the mid lane convincingly against the Death Prophet. But uh, that that top lane from the early kill just it felt like it got into emergency mode so quickly that uh, the dominance of the Viper mid just never came. And Viper's not a game a hero that's just going to win a game for by himself. He's a hero yeah. that's going to win his lane. It is going to hopefully hold the enemy core down. Yeah, but well. when his other lanes are going against him, it, it, he's a momentum based hero. Yeah. And Freeze, MVP, uh, no surprise there, absolutely. Oh, gosh. Absolutely deserved <laughs> one of the most you know, solid jug performances we were seeing from him.
again, uh, <laughs> this is, this is uh, an, an algorithm here, a computer algorithm. I, I think I could have run that algorithm on, on my old TI-80 calculator and gotten this answer, guys. So convincing performance by Vici Gaming Thunder, Vici J Thunder to open our day here. This is finals day. We've got one more semi-final up for you next as Fnatic will take on Optic Gaming to find out who will be our second participant on our best of five grand final this afternoon. Thank you, gentlemen, for my panel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Stay there, though. We got one more semi-final coming up for you right now. Next.